Today we are talking about Blu-ray special features. So welcome to the College Cinema. Uh, my name is Aaron, and if you haven't been here before, this is my uh, this is my movie library. This is where we talk about all things movie collecting, be it Blu-ray. Uh, we talk video games sometimes too, and we sometimes dive into other topics like uh, like wrestling, Doctor Who, and that type of stuff. I want to give a special shout and thank you to uh, my uh, my Patreon uh, supporters out there. You guys rock, and to the people that have supported me over Super Chat over the last few couple of days. Uh, that's uh, that's going to be going eventually into a, a really nice move towards uh, towards doing podcasting along with this. Today, however, I wanted to do something different. We did collection videos recently. We've talked about all the sales that are going on. But today, we are talking about special features. Some of my special fe favorite special features on Blu-ray. Recently, there was a video that was put out there by, uh, by an actual good YouTuber the, uh, called The Angry Video Game Nerd. Uh, well, his channel I watch a lot of, especially when he does. He used to do like the kind of like the the movie stuff. Not so much the uh, the movie stuff that he does now, but the horror stuff that he used to do. Hey, Dave, welcome. You're the first person to say something here. Um, but he he did a video basically talking about, and I mentioned it before, uh, how Blu-ray uh, isn't is a uh, sucks. How Blu-ray isn't good format. Hey, Sam, Dave, welcome. And that was a really bad video uh, for a guy that researches his stuff and does a lot of. Uh, you know, it does a lot of like really good like movie videos and really good like gaming videos. Uh, it was a bit of a blight on uh, on on the, on the other videos in his channel, and it turned into like I don't like Blu-ray. Here's it became a basically a, a thirty-minute commercial, basically saying do you get a prize, you get a thumbs up, saying you know buy my Blu-ray though. Uh, <laughs> that that was kind of how it went. So I'm going to talk about some of the companies. That I think indicate order. Farms two and three. Nice. There's some great stuff in those volumes. If there's movies there that you haven't seen a bit, send them to Dave. I want to know uh, what your thoughts on them are, especially ones like Cash on Demand. And uh, I think volume three is Tear of the Tongues as well. So if that's the one that I'm thinking of, uh, I kind of want your opinion on that too, because I think you'll like it. So I literally just jumped out of the shower. Well, I didn't jump because I, then I'd slip and I wouldn't be here making the video right now. So what? So basically we're going to be talking about today some companies that do some great work with special features and some companies that probably still have to, a lot of work to do with, uh, with special features. And I'm not going to like give anything out right away, but we'll just say Mill Creek. Mill Creek, you have a ways to go when it comes to special features. Uh, although you're starting to go there. But what really surprised me is when I was like perusing my, my movie library and I was trying to decide some some things to show off, uh, well, pretty much to show you guys, like special features that I think you should have, one company kept coming up over and over again with uh, with special features that I really enjoyed. Uh, they may not have always been the longest special features, but they were some of the most entertaining special features. And I expected it to be, can you guess the company? Because it's not who I expected it to be. Uh, it, it really isn't, which, uh, which kind of surprised me. Now, uh, there are companies that do great, great films and a lot of great stuff, but one just killed it with special features. Uh, no, more than one. There's got a lot of companies there. Hey, AME, welcome, man. Um, we're talking special features on Blu-rays today. I got some I got some Blu-rays specifically that I'm going to show. I'm going to showcase certain companies. One company stood out. Maybe I'll, I'll leave it till afterwards. Um, I'll start showing some of the uh, movies that with with special features on it that I think everybody should have in their collection. That I think are are kind of must-haves if you're into those type of films. So we'll uh, we'll start with that. I only took a couple box sets because I didn't think it was fair to do mostly box sets. Uh, but I but here's the thing. I've only got a, I've got a few here. But if the video runs longer, I can always add more. So first off, we do have the indicator one first. That one of the ones that stood out for me with indicator, and uh, I'm guessing a lot of people grabbed the set when it was on during the sale, uh, and it definitely has probably one of the best features uh, that indicator ever put out on any of their sets, and it was the uh, William Castle Volume One set. Now, if you're not familiar with William Castle, he's a uh, he was a director, later became a producer. He produced Rosemary's Baby. For uh, people that like the the bigger stuff, but for people that like the kind of cool schlockier stuff like me, uh, he was like the gimmick guy. He was the P.T. Barnum of cinema, actually. 
but he was nicer, he wasn't as mean as P.T. Barnum was. And this is a great set, because not only does it have four of his all-time best movies, which is not what we're talking about today, it's that, got it from last sale, it's a cool one. The documentary on here, and Cinema Dave knows exactly what I'm talking about, because I know, know he's seen it, called Larger Than Life, The Making of Spine Tingler. It's a documentary on P.T. Barnum. Oh no, sorry, where's it at? Is this? No, that's the East Bend. Well, there's a documentary on P.T. Barnum, my Spine Tingler, that's what it's called. The Wim Castle Story on P.T. Barnum. Ah! Oh, I, I got Barnum in the head now. A Spine Tingler, The Wim Castle Story is on here. And it is a 93-minute documentary, something like that, 97-minute. It doesn't really say here, but it's a 90-something-minute documentary. It's a feature-length documentary on the, the life and films of William Castle. It is utterly fantastic. It is fascinating. I've watched it around four times now since I got this set. And it definitely makes you want to go and watch every Castle film uh, after, you see the, uh, after, after you see it. And you kind of feel bad for him in the fact that he probably... Sh now, he really wanted to direct Rosemary's Baby, but the studio wouldn't let him do it. Uh, they get him a producer on it, but uh, no, they wanted the Plansky guy to do it because uh, Plansky had a bigger name. And of course, we know that years down the road, we all know now that, uh, hey, Brian, welcome, man. That Plansky had an amazing reputation, and that was not a mistake at all. Uh, William Castle would have been a, a horrible choice for Rosemary's Baby. No, he wouldn't have been. Although I love Rosemary's Baby. I would love to see what what Wim Castle would have done with it. I'm sure there would have been more showmanship. But, uh... Cinematic Dave, do you agree? You got the set. Who has the set here? Who has seen the feature that I'm talking about? The documentary on Wim Castle. Because it is incredible. Um, and this is one that I think, and I'm, I'm guessing Cinematic Dave will... Cinema Dave will Great. That's a cool name for a. Ooh, Cinema Grave is a cool name for like a for a horror channel. If anybody ever wants to use that, Cinema Grave. Or is that already in horror channel? If it's not, that's a cool name for a horror channel. Maybe I'll use that on the channel down the road. Uh, we'll say that is a good. That's a good choice. The other one has absolute must. Uh, now this is a limited edition, but all the features are on the regular edition as well. Uh, it's, you just miss out on a book and a poster, and that is The Night of the Demon. Uh, I don't have to talk about this one very long because basically I just did an indicator video not long ago. Uh, anybody that has or bought indicator stuff, this is one of the films that is probably in their library, whether it be the regular standard edition or the limited edition. I'm pretty sure almost everybody watching this video has this movie already in their collection. But if you don't, um, get on it. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing film spilled with f filled with an intense amount of special features oh. just about during the sale well and you're gonna have some let me know what you think because there, there i mean there's appreciations and uh, and retrospectives and talking about everything from the film the director uh the, the source material to the to the music just everything is like dived into in the special features on that set it's, it's insane though how uh how, how in depth they go with the film and, and actually and they actually provide four versions of the film on the set as well so uh you'll it, it's a weekend thing so once you go to watch night the, night the demon like get ready for like a whole weekend excursion of, of going through the features and if you want to go through the different versions or or at least the uk and, and the u.s versions I'll do the one other box that I chose for this collection right away. And get that one out of the way. The rest of them are mostly, well, it's another other box set. Uh, but uh, are going to be singular releases. And maybe I'll do the box set one eventually. Or maybe I'll do it later on today. In, in this video, I mean. Is the Critters Collection. This is awesome. Uh, this and Rec, which is over there, by the way, uh, are two of the best feature-wise box sets that Screen Factory put out. Now, Screen Factory put out a lot of box sets, and sometimes they're great with special features, and sometimes they're not so good with special features. I'm looking at Upaz and Ivy Collection, which is a great set, but has absolutely zero special features. I look tired. Actually, I'm the opposite of tired today. Uh, I actually just got to the shower, so I'm probably at my most hyper right now. Every single one of these films 
has a making of, a, a brand new making of on here, uh, like Rec. Rec is another one. If you've got the Rec set too, get the Rec set if you like Rec at all. Um, because some of the making ofs on the Rec set are longer than the films themselves. That's how in depth Scream Factory goes with this stuff. Scream Factory do a really good job when it comes to, uh, to special features. Still don't have Curse Attack. Uh, if I can find that one like for really cheap, I'll get it, but uh, not one that I'm looking forward to too much. I've, I've heard a lot of not good stuff. But Critters, Critter Collection and Rec should be, if you like, like if, if you like those films at all, uh, this should be in every movie collector's uh, library. They are really that good. All right. One that's going to be slightly different from the other ones on the show in this uh, collection. And uh, this is Dr. Who. This is the most recent like series collection that came out uh, with Sylvester McCoy, the uh, seventh Doctor. This is actually the final series of Doctor Who before it got, went out the air for the wilderness years and didn't come back for many, many years to come. It is insane the amount of features that are on the set, aside from like all the episodes and alternate like versions of the episodes, VHS versions of the episodes, uh, the uh, the whole ton of behind the sofa features which are amazingly great. Uh, there's a great documentary and, and it kind of it tugged at my heart a bit and that is Showman the Life of John Nathan Turner. Thanks MC. <laughs> uh, this set specifically, uh, I grew up with Doctor Who and I'd if you did it all, you always heard the name John Nathan Turner. J&T was kind of like, for like a long period of time, uh, starting out, he was like behind the scenes in Doctor Who, and then eventually with Series 18, he uh, he became the uh, kind of like the showrunner, and he was right till the end in, uh, in 1989 when the show went off the air. Obviously, it's back now, but uh, it went off the air for a long time. And uh, what it did to his career and his life, his life is extremely interesting. And what happened with Doctor Who and how much love and care that he put into the show and what happened to him and how he got treated afterwards was uh, it was interesting it was fascinating to watch a bit heart-wrenching as well but uh, you know, John Nathan Turner is no longer with us just spoiler out there for anybody that doesn't know um, but he uh, he passed away in uh, 2002 so he wasn't able even able to see the series come back uh, to fruition to see basically what he had set in motion finally become what he always wanted to become it is one of the great documentaries for a while my favorite films I don't have in my library that's a, that's a good idea I'll do that one soon actually because I can actually get some good ones with that but if you are remotely a fan of Doctor Who at all hey Roy uh, or you just want a really good documentary on uh, on John Nathan Turner, producer? Uh, you're interested in like uh, in, in him? Act, absolutely, get yourself that box set before it sells out. These things do tend to sell out. By the way, these are limited editions, and after a while, these sets do sell out. Usually, the Tom Baker ones sell out the fastest, but uh, both sell out too. I wanted some stuff that I thought people may have passed on because they weren't they, they weren't like totally familiar with the film. Do I have any unearthed films? I got one actually, I think, but I can't remember which one it is. Uh, yeah, I do. I got one. The one I got, I think I liked. Hey, Javid, <laughs> we're talking special features today, and this will open up people up to this guy's films. I think, uh, especially if you haven't seen any, if you're if you've collected like stuff. Like a Bruno Matai or Sergio Martino, Alfred, uh, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, Dar 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 Dario Argento. I'll get at it one of these days. Um, but you never looked at Cozy at all. You uh, you probably should. And th with this one right here, this is where you start. This, this is Contamination. This is the, uh, the slip cover edition. There's a a regular. I love commentaries actually, but I don't listen to them enough lately. Uh, edition of this, but. What it has on here and why this is a must uh, for me and for anybody that's interested in Italian cinema, 
there is an amazing, like over an hour long documentary on, uh, on him. And, uh, he talks about his, how he got into, uh, into filmmaking, his uh, work as a, uh, it does have actually a Logan run type feel. Doing pretty good, sir, man. Um, I'm shower fresh, so I'm pretty, I'm feeling pretty good right now. The, he talks about like his work that he did before going into film it's utterly fascinating he had a fascinating life and he was like uh he did stuff like kind of like a french version of like a science fiction magazine much like a like a star log or something like that that you'd have over in north america he worked on that um <laughs> it's a good time that's right kind of contamination kind of topic well yeah so this one deals much more with like uh zombies and stuff. <laughs> So if you're, if you're at home and you're isolated and you want to watch Contamination, or at least the, watch the special feature. Hey, and ready, welcome, man. Nice to see you back again. The Critter Set's incredible. Thanks, Frank. Uh, I've been wanting to do this topic for a while. And I'm going to go through things pretty rapidly. And if you want me to stop, the Unnameable, I actually like the Unnameable. That's one I do have. I, I think that's one. By, hey, Greg. That's one by Unearth Films that I got. Uh, Unnameable's really fun. It's a low budget, like no, it's like it's a lower budgeted film, but it's something that I actually uh, really enjoyed. I can't remember feature-wise if there's much on it, but uh, there there are some stuff enough to make to definitely make it like a, a must-have, especially with like creature films or the kind of that style of stuff. You're you're gonna enjoy that. Another Arrow one that I uh, put in my. Uh, My collection here that I that I wanted to have show uh, for today. I don't have my messages open yet. I'll open up yet, Alan. Is there a D, DVD NTSC Region One edition? I don't know the DVD for a contamination. Which let me see. Well, yeah, it's a Blu-ray DVD combo, and uh, it's both actually. Contamination is A and B, Region A and B. And the DVD is region one and two. So this one here does ha is if you buy this one, it's both regions. So you're good. <laughs> two weeks off work. Unfortunately, if I get off, if I if they if I have two weeks off work, I do not get two weeks with pay for the type of job that I that I have. What would happen is I would just have two weeks off work, uh, and I wouldn't lose, uh, I guess, time or. Uh, but I would be two weeks uh, of pay free, so it'd be better for me if I could if I could work at home, than uh, than actually just have time off because time off for me means no no income, and uh, I'm actually extremely nervous about that fact. Cause yeah, it's uh, that that would that would suck. <laughs> but for people that can get the time off, definitely not. The type of work that, I, that I'm in and the type of work that I do are totally different things. Um, I am in, or I was in, public relations and uh, social media. That's what, I, that's what I'm trained for. That's my, but as you know, what you go to university for and what you actually do are two totally different things. I live in a small area where there's not a, uh, an overabundance of the type of work that I, that I do. And by overabundance, I mean there's pretty much none. So what I do right now is I work at a uh, at a center where uh, I take orders. I uh, basically I'm in like like at a, basically at a call center type place where I take orders. I wish I worked at a bank. Bank has, has better hours, but I uh, know I can say I got good hours where I'm working at right now. Uh, I'm not the type of like call center that's calling people or anything like that. Basically, people call me for uh, like to place orders from uh, you know from online from catalogs that type of thing. But uh. So needless to say, um, it's a great place to work. The people there are, are incredible, but uh, money-wise, yeah. There's a reason you don't see a lot of unboxes on my channel right now. Uh, that's, the, that, that's the blunt truth of it all. <laughs> Hopefully that'll change in the near future when I move from here. But as for right now, it's uh, a little bit different. Uh, so uh, are people going nuts here? Uh, so, some people are. Uh, Blu-rays and DVDs to avoid. That's actually a good one. I don't do a lot of negativity ones on my channel, but uh, maybe I'll do that. Um, 
but yeah, like there's been people going out and buying like all the toilet paper and stuff like that, which is insane. But uh, <laughs> it happens. Money's too tight to mention. Oh. Why to the eye? A minimum wage. I feel your Eggman. I'm not quite there, but it's it's pretty close. Um, but I have to say, I do have to say that the company that I work for are actually pretty good. Um, they're, you know, they're treat me extremely well. I got a nine to five thirty job, Monday to Friday. And, uh, I can't complain about that. You guys have some great ideas. <laughs> Put these, you should put these in the comment section too. So when I'm reading through the comments and stuff, I actually remember the stuff. So White the Eye is a fantastic film, but even better, just have this edition. Not the Screen Factory edition. It's good too. It's a good edition. But the documentary on here, it is definitely worth it. Donald Kamel, The Ultimate Performance is a feature length film about the uh, director, Donald Kamel. Uh, he left way too early. Oh, Ragman, that's more than me. Just, just saying, Ragman. That's more than me. Um, another great documentary was on the uh, what was it on? on Rima Williams, where they talked about the '80s films. I will definitely be getting some of the Paramount ones. Is it like a, It's kind of like a slash shootman, but it's a little bit different um, in the way that uh, when Kamal was given pretty much given the script for what of the eye it was going to be a uh a, a standard slasher film but uh Kamel is a very different uh eccentric type of uh type of type of a uh, director that's the one kathy moriarty yeah she's uh she's a wife in this one um so he he wouldn't make just a standard slasher film he made it so he wanted to make something more and he definitely succeeds with that it is a fantastic, like, thriller, psych like, definitely a psychological thriller. Uh, but the documentary on his life is even better than the film itself. And if you have not seen this documentary, I will 110% say right now, this is a documentary that anybody that loves film, that loves cinema, has to see. Oh, the film for me is, like, is definitely, like, getting out there. It's, it's a 9 or a 10. Uh, I love The Wood of the Eye. I'm a, I'm, I'm a bashed fan of it. The documentary just as much. It's it is an incredible documentary, and 100% needs to be seen by everybody. Like cinema at all. I wish. See, you got good weather and thirteen dollars an hour minimum wage. That's pretty good. The doc's about Donald Kamel, the director himself, uh, Javed, and um, he's like very unique, very uh, kind of art, art, very artsy, very very different, and had a very fascinating life. Uh, didn't like burn bright, went 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 early. Uh, I, I, in my opinion, yes. Uh, I like performance. The one he did with uh, Mick Jagger. Uh, he did a few films, but trust me, get if you don't have get this one, check out that documentary. Uh, and for uh, this one here is region locked for people that 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 need to know that. I'm not sure if Arrow. I don't think Arrow ever put out a region free release of this one because. Scream Factory put out their edition of White of the Eye, but it is missing the uh, is missing the documentary. If you don't have that documentary, Cubic Club, you got you got to have it. Like whether you like performance or not, you got to have the documentary. This film is just filled with a ton of features, and I'm actually going to do a a video on this director in the very very near future and that is Lucio Fulci uh, I've been wanting to like to like just dive in his stuff and this is the lizard in a woman's skin by Mondo Macabre. Mondo Macabre is really good with uh, with a lot of the features that they put on their films they don't always have like an abundance like four or five or six hours of features but when they put features on their films they're quality features and one of the my favorite things that they do and they don't have it on this one actually I don't, I don't think anyway but they got like uh, documentaries on the uh, on the director, documentaries on the film, interviews with like tons of people. But a lot of these here, actually, no, that that is actually from the Balkan, I think. Yeah, it's from the Balkan. Though I can see the look of Barbara Steele there, but uh, it is the gorgeous from the Balkan. Do I have All Into Death, Alan? I've got All Into Death on the Arrow Video DVD of it. I didn't upgrade to the Blu-ray. 
uh, not as of yet. Basic, and the reason for that is because they took features off of the Blu-ray that were on the DVD. So I'll eventually get the Blu-ray because I do like Nico Mestrakis, and uh, I think he's a really cool director. But uh, I'll get it to to go with the DVD and not replace it because there's still features on the DVD that aren't available on the uh, Blu-ray edition of Arrow. So just to let you know, uh, if you ever see like, an Arrow sale and you see and you got the Blu-ray and say you really like All in the Death, um, then check out uh, the uh, the DVD if, if it goes on sale. If say you get it for five pounds or something like that, definitely pick it up for the extra features. She's an off flash. She was actually. Florinda Balkan is an incredible actress and one that I should I should do some actress spotlights on this channel as well. That's something. Would you guys like that in the future as well? Like, like looking at like uh, movies movies of like Florinda Balkan or Edwidge Finnich or uh, Barbara Steele, people like that. Because we can do some of those too. Green cases. This was not. This did not come with it. Uh, the person that that gave me this one as a uh, birthday present one year actually changed it out it had it had a regular case uh and he changed it out and put put it in a green case lena romay actually that's one javed that when i go to my dad's remind me okay because my dad is an unabashed and very knowledgeable uh fan of lena romay so when i do a lena romay video that's got to be with my dad he knows her he knows all of her stuff back to front Barbara Steele. Oh, Frenda is amazing. Do I think the 4K Blu-ray underground re-releases will carry the old special features from the old releases? I think so. I mean, like, they should. Uh, the only thing that they're going to be missing out on, from what I can tell, now, I, I don't know if everything's been taught out special feature-wise. I don't see anything new in the special features with the, with the Blue Underground releases, but what I have been seeing is uh, it does look like that the soundtracks that are on the uh, on the editions that we got now may not be included in the 4Ks. So, uh, yeah. If they're not, that's going to be a bit of a miss. I'm iffy on how I feel about the 4K Blue Underground releases. I'm glad that they're doing them. I'm glad that like Zombie and Maniac are getting 4K releases. I just wish, and maybe it was beyond their control, that uh, they could have been up front and told us that they were going to be doing 4K uh, of releases of those. But I know it would have hurt the sales of their Lenticular releases, but uh, I just bought those two. So it kind of... I don't have that edition, so I, I really can't tell you on that one now. I got a lot of editions of the film, though. Did you want to work with Franco? Uh, no, Lino Romay worked with a few other people. I'll get into it in my Lino Romay video. Uh, but uh, there's a reason that she worked with Franco a lot. So I didn't put Arnold Schwarzenegger's return to do to voice Dutch for Hot Predator. That's kind of cool, actually. But he's getting up there. Like, voice work actually makes sense. For his, uh, for him, right, right, right. That's one like some of the other like action movie heroes kind of do that too. Can I read your comment about 4K? Did did I not read the comment? I thought I did. Do I think scream? Oh, sorry, I didn't actually. I would apologize. Do I think scream and shout factory will go the 4K route soon? Uh, I think eventually we're seeing it slowly come through. I mean, like Vinegar Syndrome did it. Uh, we got to see it being done with uh, with Kino Lorber. Uh, now we're getting Blue Underground doing it. I think like we've seen scream like and they've been like releasing their stuff and then re-releasing it with steelbook editions so 4k seems the next logical step for a uh, scream factory uh, some people are going to be like oh i don't want to watch, get these movies again like if it's an older film it's a film that i got a couple times i that uh like i i wish you still had terror train i like to see a 4k edition of terror train and uh from uh, from scream factory and uh, i think scorpion releasing might have had that late, later but uh I don't think I've got any of their releases here under the, uh, which gives me a second to stop and talk about a couple companies that uh, that I don't uh, think are doing uh, great jobs when it comes to special features, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be pretty easy actually, and I think a lot of people are going to, so hopefully some of you guys can agree, maybe you won't, and if you don't, like, please feel free to tell me to tell me why. Uh, 
Yeah, I know that's the thing with me. Well, now it makes me nervous with the 4K when the when there's maybe a UHD disc on on the horizon. But Code Red, uh, not the best with special features. Definitely like one of the uh, on the lower end, uh, special feature wise. Uh, I consider Code Red and Mill Creek around the same when it comes to like uh, that'll be Heretic to some people because some people are like super huge Cold Red fans and I do like a lot of their stuff and I do like some of the films that they put out. I just wish that a lot of films that they put out, UHD are the 4K discs. They're called ultra high definition. Um, some people call them 4K UHD Blu-rays, but uh, they're 4K discs. They're not actually Blu-rays, so uh, I call them UHDs. But uh, yeah, Code Red, Warner Archives. Yes, Warner Archives is extremely bad when it comes to its uh, releasing like special features on there. I had, a, I had a list that in my mind. It was Warner Archives, there was Code Red, uh, Mill Creek, which I've already mentioned at the beginning of this video. Uh, though Mill Creek is getting better than Warner Archives when it comes to special features. At least they're starting to put commentaries and we're getting to see some sets there. Uh, when they released the Masters of the Universe like cartoon series and with, with the big, it was, it was something that you would expect Shout Factory to put out. This Arrow distribute family friends. Arrow has a bit of everything. Didn't used to, it's not so much, but they didn't used to. A lot of movies got pushed back, Superman. Uh, New Mutants is pushed back. There's a whole ton of movies being pushed back. We talked about that actually, I mean, better half recently. Yeah, that's the thing, Jab. With the, with the releases of, of Maniac and, uh, and Zombie, by the way, which have incredible features and uh, were ones that I was going to bring over but forgot to. Um, I don't know how much better that 4K is. I mean, that 4K has got to be really good. Like, that UHD release has to be really, really good. And it's got to put something significant in there for me to say, oh, I think I'm going to buy Zombie for the fourth time. Because I got around four copies of that film right now. And I love Zombie versus Shark. But still. All right, next up. Maniac 60 millimeter. It'll be interesting to see. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. It's not something I'm going to pre-order. It's something I'll wait on the reviews for. And I'll see what the pricing's like, how they're doing it, what's uh, what the features are. I'm not a person, like, it won't matter to me if it's a little bit better. I, I'm never the type of person that goes to Capaholic or places like that. Uh, I actually, those sites... I actually had the Robocop Special Edition sent to me, and it is incredible. It was one of my releases of last year, actually. It seems like Blue Underground and Ready is that they don't actually have a lot of new titles. Good for kids or teenagers, or like a family-friendly video. That'll be good for my channel, that's for sure. And I definitely have enough like family films here to do it. Almost like a Severance Kid video, but like, for me. <laughs> That's right though, yeah. You're like my youngest viewer, I think. Though, there was another, there's a girl, she's in college now. But when she started watching my channel, I think she's about 16. She's a really big Criterion fan. She had her, she had her own channel, but... I don't think she does a lot now, uh, but uh, incredibly smart girl. If she would have lived around her, would have introduced to my kids because. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if Terminator 2 is one of the worst 4Ks out there. Oh no, uh, Dwayne, you gave me bad news. <laughs> it's good news is coming out. It's, you're right, it is good news, bad news. Uh, Blue Monkey's a movie, it's a Canadian film, uh, for those are, that aren't aware. It's a exploitation film, it's a, but kind of a monstery film. And uh, it's only ever been on VHS. Uh, I don't think it ever made it to, to Blu ray, to DVD. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Dwayne. Uh, and it had like the coolest cover of like these kind of 
I don't know if they're nurses or just girls running. And there's this like, hey, shadow, welcome, man. And they were doing like, a, and you see like a shadow of this creature. But uh, it, it was a fun film. It was definitely a fun film. It's one that I've wanted for a while. Uh, but what I don't, <laughs> what I, the, and one of the least things I want is seeing Blue Monkey come in from Cold Red or, or Dark Force. <sighs> That's disappointing. Um, did they announce that recently? I'm glad it's coming out though. Like I'll, I'll, I'll get it. I'll definitely get it. Or at least do you want to see on 4K? That's, that's for another video. I'll actually, I'll do that though. <laughs> Including Robocop. Yeah, no Robocop. I'll buy that for a dollar. Last couple of days. See, I'm, I'm behind on some of this stuff. That's what happens when you get so many comments. Do I have Ghost Shark? <laughs> I don't. Cool Duder is actually in a few movies. He lives in the area where you can. If I was living where Cool Duder was, I would definitely be like going on every like movie thing where I, that I could get on, be in the background, something like that. Man walking to get newspaper. It's my favorite Robocop film. Ah, definitely the first one. Uh, you can't beat the first one. The original first one, not, not the remake. <laughs> uh, next up in uh, special features that I really enjoyed and uh, a movie that I recommend. Unfortunately, this one's out of print, so if you find this one online or somewhere else, uh, welcome back, Dave. Uh, then Vinegar Cinema put out a movie called Disconnected. Uh, it seems pretty amateur hour for most of the film, acting-wise especially, um, but there's sequences in the film, especially the ending, that kind of chilled me a bit, kind of haunted me. But what makes this one really good, like especially good, is there's... A, a short film that the, that the director made on here and uh, it was called 20 questions so 20 questions is actually a pretty good a uh, short film um, and I remember it's about an hour long I think there's an introduction and there's a Q&A with it uh, so like this movie gets its own special features and 20 questions the short film that's included on here gets its own special separate like amount of special features as well which is incredible and uh, I love like seeing when I can find like like extra films or student films, and that's one of my favorite things. You did tell me at the ending, cause I, cause I Dark Force Club. Probably because I don't follow Dark Force. That's the thing, right? I it just got too uh, got too 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 dark. I want to say with some of the stuff they're saying. You like my Friday stream? Thanks a lot. Kudos is some of the worst films ever made. Uh, that's the thing. I would love to be in that. Like, uh, it's, look who you're talking to, the guy that that champions movies like Nail Gun Massacre and and, and things. Uh, I would not. I would not care about being in the latest Tom Cruise film. It would be much more of a treat for me, as the type of film fan that I am, to be in movies like like Asylum or Ghost Shark or or Witchcraft Number Twenty Seven. Uh, that uh, that that for me that that's like a that's a mo that's a check mark for me. Could I do a stream for action movies. That's actually a really good idea, and that is one that I will do uh, because I do have a lot of action movies here. And uh, I'll do my best action, my favorite action movie releases. Uh, I'll be, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, MVD Rewind is going to be in that. What's the most depressing film I've ever seen? <laughs> well, I got the Ingmar Bergman collection. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, depends on how you how you define depressing. If you're talking about like a movie that that like was really, that I found really depressing that got you know kind of got me down. Uh, <laughs> to Lisa's Revenge, I would definitely be in that film. Uh, He's kind of cute too, man. But I, I don't know. I mean, Pulse, dude, that one's depressing. It's depressing that they made a remake of Pulse, actually, because uh, I liked Pulse. Not the best, like, like uh, Asian horror film, but way better than the than the remake. Hey there, Scholar. General, Con oh yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it, what makes a movie depressing is. Uh, is you know something like watching Rob Zombie's Halloween too. I'm like really depressed because 
it's like here's a guy that's like got talent and and it's, and it's not well and it's not utilized in that film that depresses me that's what depresses me. <laughs> uh, but as for actually depressing films i don't know i watched uh i'm not sure if it's like depressing or not like it is kind of depressing i guess but uh a movie that i really hate and i never watch again oh no no a movie that i like okay one movie that i like i, I didn't like it man i know a lot of people like it like it's and it is of the, Different, like a uh, different era, but I'm old, so I'm uh, I'm old and crouchy. Uh, but Eden Lake stands out as like a uh, a depressing film that I that I really enjoy, but that I couldn't go back to for a while, for a while. Serbian films, one I was going to mention, Javid, you kind of read my mind there, as a film that I that was depressing and that that I didn't like, and that I I didn't buy their uh, I didn't believe they were sincere. But uh, Eden Lake, a hundred percent Eden Lake. It, uh, the ending is, is extremely dark. It's an extremely well-acted film. Uh, it is tense almost all throughout. You get to the end, and it looks like it's going to work out well. And then they punch you in the gut and kick you between the legs, and they leave you there, and then they pee on you. <laughs> that's the way it feels after you finish Eden Lake. Frozen is another one that that's kind of like that, but there is still people. But The Vanishing is, a, is severely depressing, both versions of it, especially the original. And in a way, I'll say Funny Games too, by with by Henko. Morally disgusted Ser Serbian film, uh, because the film was was depressing. Uh, it, it went in places it did not have to go. Uh, and at the time, I think the director said, "Oh, this is a political statement," and and I didn't buy him. I didn't buy that. Like, if you want to make an exploitation film and you want to go dark and do that type of thing. Oh, sure. Uh, but if you want to, like, fancy it up and say it's something that I don't think it is, and of course I'm not the director, uh, then uh, that, that, would, uh, that would be the one that stood out to me. Good questions, by the way, guys. Very good questions. In a lonely place. Great film, by the way. Dwayne, great film. Frozen. Well... He's not talking about Frozen, the Elsa one, uh, Superman. He's talking about the Frozen done by Adam Green, the guy that did Hatchet. He made a movie called Frozen where there are these people that get stuck on the ski lift. And, and uh, there's, there's three of them. There's a girl and there's these two guys that get stuck in a ski lift. And there's, uh, they, they're trying to get down. They're, they're freezing. There's wolves down below. Uh, it is a fantastic film. Uh, Break, which was a similar film, where they get stuck in a, in a ski like a gondola, um, done in uh, in Germany, I think, is that is is not like as dark or as bleak as that one, but uh, it's it actually is a really fun film and I enjoyed it. Break recently came out last year, I think last year at Walmart and it was like twelve dollars to buy, so uh, definitely one to watch. Another really cool one that I liked recently that I watched was a movie called The Furies, uh, F U R I S, and it is a, a hunting, you know, basically a uh, one that uh. I've seen a lot. I, I love everything Melissa George. Triangle's my favorite, though. Triangle's my favorite Melissa George film. Barn on the Javit. Triangle's one of those. Uh, I didn't guess the ending to Triangle. Uh, and I'm glad I did, and I just really enjoyed it. So for, it's, uh, well, you can think of it, like, Brian, this way. Like, Frozen, like, a kid's Frozen? I don't know. It depends if you have a kid. Oh, uh, no. Uh, with the Adam Green one, yeah, it can be. I mean, uh, you know, they're up there. They're, they're stuck. They, you know, they kind of they can't get down. Uh, it, it is ex it exactly Javits. Well, Javits are right there. It's an extremely tense film. Uh, and you're waiting to see it, if they're going to survive, if any of them are going to survive. My Bloody Valentine location before I move. I won't. I, actually, that is still ready to be done. Just my better half just got home. And we were going to do it recently, but she's... Feeling not feeling the best, so she's staying home for a bit. Got inside my ear. I didn't see the movie actually, but uh, I'm kind of interested now. <laughs> oh, Water in the Snow. Uh, a little. Oh, Water's a bit depressing too when you think about it. Uh, but I actually liked uh, f the Adam Green movie Frozen is better than uh, than Old Water. Oh yeah, it's just it's like. Just mostly, she's really tired from after. From uh, it was a long, it was a long trip. So, a few days off to just rest and recuperate. Right? 
which is needed, especially where she's been on the on the go, like she, from since she got back, actually. Do I think there'll be a Blade Runner three? Uh, I'll, no, I don't think so. Not for a few years, but I'm good with that. Uh, I like Blade Runner, uh, and I like Blade Runner twenty forty nine as well. But uh, I even like the TV series that have nothing to do with Blade Runner. But uh, but yeah, I'll. Uh, I'm I'm good with them not making a third one, because I think these two were really well done. But they're and I know there's places they could go. They definitely set it up for a third one in the, in the uh, second film. But you're right, the movie did make as much money as they thought, and I'm actually good with with two like that. If they want to do a third one eventually, uh, have a good script, have a good director behind it, and we'll uh, we'll see. But uh, I don't think anyone, either Blade Runner is coming anytime soon. But give it five five years or so to make it or to remake it or something like that because that's what they're doing nowadays. We're going to run out of stuff to remake. Going to start remaking the remakes. Okay, Urban Legend. Uh, again, amazing special features on this one here. There's a feature like documentary, which is the uh, second disc of the film, the entire second disc. Uh, if you don't have this release and you're collecting slasher films, and I know somebody on here is collecting slasher films. I'm not sure if he's here tonight. But uh, incredibly fun film, highly underrated. And the documentary on this, deals with like just the, uh, the kernel of the inception of the film right through to like the making of it the casting the the production the post-production uh, oh no uh, this one i think has a, a documentary that i'm pretty sure is you uh, can check to be sure is exclusive to this one here it's called a feature length documentary called on uh, the making of urban legend uh, and i think it's a screen factor exclusive the making of this one, it's its the entire second disc of the film. Uh, when I say it, it's, it's, well, it is definitely one to have. Urban Legend is a really good film anyway. People underrate Urban Legend. So you get the special film there and you get the special features. I watch this one a lot. Jamie Blanks is a highly underrated director. It's its kind of how I know my, sla my slasher f like fans from my slasher kind of like kind of fans is I'll ask them and say what do you think about Urban Legend and Valentine and then I'll wait to see what the responses are and then I'm like huh, huh maybe you don't get the 80s do I like the movie Vacancy not the first time I saw it actually uh, it took me a couple times I like it now uh, but it was one of those that like kind of kind of like uh, grew on me and I don't know if I've ever seen Vacancy too. actually that's not a neat idea Kubrick my Blood Valentine. Well, obviously, the, both versions of My Blood Valentine are great, but the one shot here in Nova Scotia is the best. Uh, I'm not even joking. It really is. Um, they did a great job of that. It's very Canadian, uh, like super Canadian. If you, it's going to make you want, you're going to watch the movie, and you're going to be like afterwards, like, I think I should have a Moosehead beer, uh, which you probably shouldn't do because you're 16. But uh, there's Moosehead beer all over the place in, uh, in My Blood Valentine. One of the biggest mistakes made in the, in the remake of My Blood Valentine, and I said this, to uh, like I, I messaged Todd Farmer, the guy that wrote the film, and I said, you know, you didn't do a 3D Moosehead beer in your remake. That's, you messed up there, Todd. You messed up. <laughs> really, like, nice guy, actually, by the way. Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2. Part 1 has, has a great documentary as well, but Part 2 surpasses it. Uh, there is an insanely great documentary in, in here, and I've said it before. Like as, you know, as a, as a wannabe actor myself back in the day, um, the interview when we talked to Eric Freeman, kind of breaks my heart. Really does. But uh, definitely have this in your collection. Michael Michael escape the final level of hell and hell <laughs> well actually it's I say oh yeah a and uh what's what's it instead of a boat uh a boot is like <laughs> is what they think a lot of Canadians say um and apparently apologize a lot like there's a lot of like like stuff like that and and like some 
some places, you know, that is like instead of a bout, like it, it is boot and stuff. And uh, and there are areas that do say a a lot. Garbage day. That's number two. So that's that's the one to get because you get the best parts of number one without any of the filler stuff, which is the first half of the film for crying out loud. And then you get the really cool cheesy stuff with uh, with Eric Freeman and Elizabeth Caton playing his girlfriend, by the way, because Elizabeth Caton's in the film. If you don't know who Elizabeth Caton is, look her up because she's really cool. Um, and she's done a bunch of horror films. Uh, his wife, Sophia, is his wife. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever seen the one. I'm going to be, what's the word? Patri I'm, I'm going to be patriotic in a way here. Boastfully patriotic. Uh, we kind of got like the uh, the best looking world leader. That's that's a that's a given. Even if you don't like him, and, and you know, I know uh, there's some people out here that, don't, that, that hate his guts, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, he is. Um, but you can't you you can't denounce him for for that. The dude has a look, um, which as a considering we had like a robot in before by the name of Stephen Harper. <laughs> It's really nice to, that uh, the countries are taken a bit more seriously now. And his uh, wife is actually incredibly attractive as well. Let me see. Or at least I think she is. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? He's not young. Like, he's guy's in his 50s, right? Early 50s, but he's in his 50s. But he looks good for his age. Actually, there's, I'm not sure well you would see that. There's wife and family, kids. It's like a second generation politician. Oh, you got to see number two, man. You really got to see it. That documentary, it's worth it. It really is worth it for the son I did in too. So that wasn't getting political. I just, because <laughs> it's not like I, I support or don't support the guy. It's just, yes, we have a good-looking PM. Let's, hopefully we can keep that way. Maybe we can get like some, some take younger ones and stuff in here. Maybe a... Oh, hell no. <laughs> just putting that out there. <laughs> a million times, no. <laughs> That's the only thing I'll say on that subject. Um, No, you don't, Dave. Trust me. No, you don't. <laughs> it was, that was a hard time for me. Uh, when your uh, spouse is, is from a different uh, is from a different country, uh, that uh, that era is definitely the hard. It was one of the hardest times of my life. Like you know, to get like totally serious for a minute. Almost lost him a better half. Due to him. Anyway, let's get away from that stuff. I don't like talking about this stuff. Let's keep politics out of the movie library. Especially when it's very personal. All right, because that got me depressed for a minute, guys. Really, to get me depressed. <clears throat> All right, Twins of Evil. Excellent, excellent, like uh, Blu-ray. Love the film. Uh, very cute actresses in the film. Uh, but what really makes it stand out is there is a 84-minute uh, documentary called Flesh and the Fury, and it talks about all the Carmilla uh, releases uh, like pretty much the Carmilla the, the the you know the book uh, all the different Carmilla films and uh, you know the whole Karenstein trilogy really cool release uh, and there's like some actual blu-ray exclusive special features on her as well which I uh, which I really enjoyed um, the props you know the house that, that Hammer built the Kinsey collection is a guy named Kinsey has like a great collection of like uh, of Hammer props uh, there's uh, the isolated music scores on this one as well. 
although I don't have any Twilight Time ones here because I do find that they are kind of lacking in special features. I do like their isolated scores, but uh, Twilight Time again is a, is a company that I really wish would up the game when it came to the, comes to the special features. Uh, I've seen like more have special features more recently, but often they'll just kind of rest their laurels on uh, on pretty much just and any special features that are already available on the on the previous discs. They don't really kind of make a lot of anything or much new uh, special feature wise. Oh, enjoy Incredible Hawks, actually a cool TV series. It has a new hammer box set. So I got from one I've got one to four, Javith. But I, I don't have number five yet. It's not out yet. But uh, yes, I had the first four. I just recently did an weren't you here for the indicator video? I'm pretty sure you were. Kino definitely. Kino's a company that I think has been upping their game, but not with everything. Uh, Kino is one that I uh, is that has done a good job in, in slowly upping their game, their stuff. Now they still have a ways to go with certain releases, but anytime like their October releases, you know, are going to be incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, they uh, they have like. Uh, there are October releases with the slip covers and the different artwork and the and the bunch of features and uh, some of their box set stuff like uh, like the Outer Limits I, I would recommend, hundred ten percent. Should look good in through four K Street Street Trash would be decent because we haven't seen a four K scan of it like uh, there hasn't been another release of it but uh, it'd be interesting to see that one come out. Star Wars fan, yeah. I had a friend like that actually, uh, Kirby Clever, that had like a, a whole, like he had, it was filled with Star Wars stuff. Well, he wasn't, because that would be, you know, then he'd probably be dead because he had Star Wars stuff in his body. No, but he had this like whole room, his basement's filled with, with Star Wars. Uh... Oh, I say scores, the only thing you never listen to. It depends on the, on the score. Do you have any horror books like Beyond Terror or So Daily? I ha yes, actually. I do, uh, Jesse. Uh, I do like Troy Howard's work a lot. I've got So Deadly, So Perverse. Uh, first volume. I don't have the second or third volume. Uh, do I think Vestron will continue their line? It's been a year and a half since I've seen a Vestron come out. They keep saying they are, but I'm, uh, I'm very iffy on whether I'm, we're actually going to see another Vestron Collector's Edition again. I don't have a lot of posters. Uh, I got the uh, Labs of poster coming. I do have a few, but uh, I don't know where they're at right now. When we moved from the last house to this one, what's the horror film that scared me the most? Well, uh, this comes from my early days in uh, on the channel, and where I mentioned it, Terror Train, not because it's the scariest movie I ever saw, but because at the time that I saw it, I was in seventh grade. Uh, I think seventh, I'm pretty sure seventh grade, and I uh, they showed it on TV. I got ready to sit down and watch the film. When my uh, my parents, uh, my mom, my stepdad at the time sent me sent me to bed, saying it was too scary for me to watch, I uh, I went to the bedroom, uh, which was right next to the TV. By the way, just uh, I need to say that. Um, and they proceeded to watch the film themselves. Turned up pretty loud, by the way, so I couldn't see the movie, but I could hear the screams and the music and all that type of stuff. So I had a much scarier version of Terror Train in my head for years until I actually saw the film. So yeah, although not the scariest movie that I've actually ever seen, but the movie that scared me the most is Terror Train. So hopefully that's a good answer. Restaurant has two releases ready but not released. I wonder why. It's taken them a while. The movie has the most special features that I own. That's hard to... Uh, I don't really know. I mean, like that Night of the Demon definitely is, is definitely up there. Was a great, I don't know. I couldn't see the Groucho Marx mask. I could just hear the noise. At the drive-in. Oh, that'd be cool, man. Showdown. Is it the best MVD rerun release? No, not actually. But you know what it is? It, it, it's kind of cool. It's fun. And uh, it's got a 90-minute, 90 98-minute documentary on the making of it. Uh, MVD has been really good recently with the making of Double Impact. It also had an incredible documentary on uh, on its uh, on its release you want to see long documentaries and like with really good special features abominable again excellent special features as well 
What movie scared me the most? Like legit scared me back in the day. Uh, Halloween. I was very. I found Halloween very scary. I found Stranger scary too. In a way. My favorite documentary. We'll get into that in my documentary video. One of my favorite documentaries of all time, though, is uh, I'll give you a couple. Uh, that's exploitation. I really love that one. Uh, the Donald Kamel documentary that I mentioned on the Way to the Eye. I wasn't joking. That is again one of my favorite documentaries. Uh, Crystal Lake Memories. I enjoyed a lot. Uh, like Never Sleep Again. Uh, the recently released In Search of Darkness is actually a really good documentary. Were you really? Oh, MVD, like they started out with like, their special features are incredible. Uh, the first movie they put out the, was a uh, DOA, which is a punk rock documentary. A lot of people don't, don't know this on my channel. But I'm a huge punk rock fan. Um, so watching the documentary was, was really good. Um, now, and then realizing that there's a full feature length documentary about the making of, the, of DOA, the punk, do, punk rock documentary. Yeah, that was also a pretty big deal as well. And they've been feature wise, they've been. Uh, Vinegar Center has some cool features. Uh, not always a lot of features, but they have like some pretty good quality features. That's why when I, you haven't seen me like show a lot of vinegar syndrome here, um, and like for like my, of my favorite special features, uh, they're good with like uh, with certain titles that I will uh, that I'll kind of get into. But I'm almost to the company that I think has the most special features, because I've left that company so last, and I left it for you guys to try and figure out which company it's going to be. And I, when I say the most special features, I mean the most quality special features. It doesn't have to be the long special features. Do I have the Blu-ray edition of Dune? I think I just got the DVD actually. Um, I better have a huge fan of Dune. I don't have the Blu-ray yet. Maybe yeah, but you'll soon find out. Have I seen the clowns? So, oh yeah, <laughs> Penelope. I don't own it. I wish I had it. So Dragnet is uh, from uh, Shout Select. I've talked about special features on this one. There's nothing out there. Again, Jesse is the. I, don't, I didn't put it here, but it's one of the, it is bar none, probably the most special features on a Vinegar Cinder release. It is insane, the amount of features, features put on that one. And it's one that I recommend if you're buying Vinegar Cinder stuff, uh, one of the first ones to buy is that one. This is incredibly fun and uh, Amy, It has a great retro feature on here. Usually the retro features are kind of what I go to like last, but the uh, just the facts, the kind of the promo, uh, like hour-long documentary about the about Dragnet actually doesn't really talk about the Dragnet film. It's just that it talks about that a tiny bit at the end, but it actually talks about uh, the uh, the the idea of uh, of the original series and how it came about and and all, and all the the behind the scenes of that. And that's what's fascinating. Did I see the document the Cinemasca video? Actually, this is almost in a way a. Uh, a rebuttal to the Cinemasker video, which I actually mentioned at the beginning of the channel, at the beginning of the video. So, yep. Send a Lord, oh yeah, addition Lord of the Rings. My better half is all else. <laughs> Just a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Not all these by the same company yet. I got one more. Oh, not, not quite. So, there's one other Snaps one I'm going to show you, and that is Popcorn. If you don't own this one and you want slasher films, yeah, DVDs had such better better features. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's sarcasm. That's just, I, I, just in case somebody like interprets that as, as being straightforward. It was his worst video ever. And Cinemasca is not a guy that's that's known for making a lot of bad videos uh, or unresearched videos. But uh, I don't know if it's it's where he's gone with a different company now. Uh, this helped him relax to make, but. Uh, Another YouTuber likes popcorn too. Which, which YouTuber do I want to know? Uh, excellent film. Get this release if you can. Uh, there is a great like uh, behind the scenes feature on here, basically making a popcorn, and the making of popcorn. He uh, <laughs> says, "Yeah, man." Uh, at a, it's fascinating. Like the director of popcorn got got let go off the film. The main actress was Joe Scholl, it was somebody else. She was also let go off the film. It's really fascinating to watch the documentary on making popcorn. Definitely check it out. 
Next up is a company that does a decent job with us stuff, and that is AGFA, the American Genre Film Association. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> so who is it then? Laser discs were the first ones to have like things like commentaries and stuff like that. So they do have some features, more than like VHS would have. You have to get a full moon release, get a full. Your 88 Films version, that has the documentary too, right? I'm pretty sure it will, right? The, you know, like the hour-long documentary. This is really cool. It's a bad film, but it's bad in it's such a good way. you got to watch it. What's really cool about them is they often put bonus movies on their on their films. So this has the Revenge of Lady Street Fighter here as well. And they always like, include the booklet too. Well, best commentary I've ever heard. I don't know the best commentary I've ever heard, but one that stands out is uh, the commentary by Friedkin for the original Narrow Margin. Is there a first part execution or part? There isn't, actually. <laughs> that was, uh, there never was. Uh, there, sometimes they just do that, just put it like the Return to Horror High, stuff like that. All right. So the company. Oh, anything Kurt Russell and, and, and John Carpenter is really good. The uh, Halloandro Jodorowsky's Doom. Uh, Jodorowsky's Doom. Um, Jodorowsky's Doom documentary, by the way, is, is a must. Definitely a must to say. AGFA has released a couple of horror films. I, I don't have any of them, unfortunately. But I, I hope to in the, in the near future. I know they've done some 70s stuff like Zodiac Killer. I think there's one 80s one. It was only done on DVD, though. It wasn't put out on Blu-ray. So before I go any further, I'm going to take a sip of my tea, and I'm going to give you one last chance to guess which company, which Blu-ray company, used Cars Commentary. i got to listen to that. I don't have that movie. i got to get it first. Good film, though. Um, I think has some of the best quality features. I mean, not the longest features. But some of the best features. Uh, yes, we watch Hot Ones a lot, actually. I don't usually watch Red Letter Media, but I'll check it out. Arrow, by far and large, does some of the best features, period. But I wanted to go different. Features that recently that uh, that surprised me. And one of you guys guessed it, by the way. Mark says he does do good commentary, yeah. Well, well, you you're gonna miss out, dude. <laughs> Don't go. It does have as, as a game show. And the company that has the best features is, and Jesse gets it too, Severin. Severin, screen, Severin films have been killing it with their special features. They may not be the longest special features, maybe even not, just a 10 or 15 minute interview. But the interviews that they put on there, the special bonus films they put on there, the having the soundtracks, uh, actually, actually have full soundtracks on, on their releases as well, coming with the... Uh, with their films, that's invaluable to me. As a person that loves cinema and wants to get as behind the scenes as I, as I possibly can, Severin really does it, and they don't get the credit for it. Arrow, Screen Factory, I'll always get credit for the special features and the amount that they put in there. I'm going to show you some like uh, some some Severin stuff that uh, that does better, even better than Grindhouse releasing actually. Um, and let's start off with one that I think is a perfect. Uh, which studio has the least special features? Code Red. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say Code Red and Warner Archives. Those two. Skinner. Skinner is a definitely a case of quality over quantity. Aside from being a really cool film that I think has flown under the radar of a lot of people, it's extremely underrated, and Ted Raimi's best performance in, a, in any role, yes, even better than Joxer, from Xena Warrior Princess. I, yeah, I got a few with some music videos on them, actually. Uh, Skinner put 
didn't do a, didn't do a big making of. Hey, J.R. Walker, man, you're coming in near the, near the end of it, but not too bad. Skinner didn't do a making of. They didn't do like a big overcompassing arc on like the whole making of the film. What they did instead was they chose to do four separate interviews with uh, four different people. They interviewed Ivan Nagy, the director of the film. They interviewed the star of the film, Ted Raimi. They interviewed the screenwriter, Paul Hart Wilden. And they interviewed editor Jeremy Caston. And it seems like just four like uh, random interviews. But they're not. Each one of these interviews shows a completely different side of this film. Especially when you get to the interview with the editor. <laughs> uh, one, it stars, the movie stars Ted Raimi, Ricky Lake, and Tracy Lords. Um, in incredible role. Basically, Ted Raimi is a psychopath, and he, uh, you know, he kills people who normally kills, he kills prostitutes. Uh, Tracy Lords is one that survived, and is looking for him. Is trying to find him. He's he's moved into this house. He's got a room in this uh, uh, from like a boarding room, at Ricky Lake, and there seems to be like kind of kind of burgeoning romance going there. It's a fascinating film, and uh, it does a great job. It, yeah, it is from the, I think it's from the 80s. No, 90s, actually, 93. Um, you don't want to see it's on Tubi. You want this this one. And I'll get to why, Jesse. I'll, I'll convince you. I'll, I'll sell you on uh, on this one. Okay, this is the, the new 4, 4K scan release of the film. And aside from that, Ivan Edgy is infamous in the film industry for one really big reason, actually. Uh, his girlfriend at the time that this movie was being made she uh, she went she came into the news she was very very popular uh, and infamous and his girlfriend was Heidi Fleiss and if that if you're younger and the Heidi Fleiss name doesn't ring any bells uh, she's a Hollywood madam and you can actually look up like the uh, you can actually look up her uh, her story actually it's pretty interesting so he was her boyfriend at the time. He's had like, kind of like, there's been rumored mob connections with Ivan Nagy as well, which actually is talked about with the editor of the film. Um, so Ivan talks about the film, the time that was being made. He talks a bit about the Heidi Fleiss thing. Uh, Ted Raimi talks more about like the film and some stuff going on. Uh, the screenwriter talks about like what a hard time it was to, uh, to, for, to do like the, uh, the script of the film. And the editor talks about the nightmare that it was trying to put this film together. Uh, each one of them has a different take on it. They all love the film pretty much. And uh, it's definitely some of the best special features. Like, they're not, like, don't have to be long. It could be like a 15 minute interview. Uh, but when you got four interviews that are so vastly different and so amazingly well done on a movie that's just fascinating on its own anyway, let alone the backstory of the Hollywood madam to the, being attached to it and possible mob connections. Uh, you get a Blu-ray release that is hands down like something that you should have in your collection. It is really fun. It's a fun film. Ted Raimi does a great job. And every feature on this one is extremely, extremely well done. So if you've never seen Skinner and you want some really good special features, this has really good special features. Severin. Wax mask. It kills it with the special features. The special features are intensive, extensive, intensive, intensive too, extensive on wax masks, but nothing tugs at the heartstrings more than the interview with Dario Argento talking to Lucio Fulci. Now, I got this one for the October package. I mentioned it was October August something like, it was, I can't remember now but uh, I mentioned this one a lot on my channel um, and anybody that got this one and watched the feature that I was talking about said you're yeah, right that that's a really really good feature uh, this is a really fun film by the way and I actually love it. it's Terminator S cover this is Severin as well everything else I'm showing here from uh, on it is uh, our Severin releases Jabin. 
So wax mask, again, uh, it's a must in my opinion. Some people said, oh, I didn't like the transfer. The transfer wax mask is, is definitely decent. And it, but some people, some people, they like to complain. Sinful Dwarf, which I'm kind of like centering here. Uh, cheesy movie, but it actually has, and uh, I'll get to that question actually after, um, an X-rated film that's really good. It did make me cry, but it did like tear my heart. You want to talk about an X-rated film that, that kind of tear my heart. That was The Blue Bloom. Uh, there's also a feature it on Harry Novak, who uh, definitely would like to see more about, uh, The Sultan of Sexploitation. But yeah, the blue balloon really stuck with me. Uh, I, do, I don't know if I've gone back and watched The Sinful Dwarf ever again, but I have watched The Blue Balloon around three or four times. Uh, it's an adult film with a story, and it's the story part that interests me. It's not the adult part of it. Uh, and it's a heartbreaking story. So that one tugged at the heart. It's an X-rated film that tugged at the heartstrings. Because, yeah, that happens. Oh, up is the first few minutes of up are, are heartbreaking. Schindler's List too. I don't mind saying when I cry at films. I'm I'm a softy. So this is absurd. Yep, yeah, the animated film. Oh, definitely that opening with him and his wife and them going through the years and her passing and then him on his own. That was that was that was tough. I love this film. I really do. I actually watch this film all the time. Um, but what's really cool is it had the soundtrack. And this is where Severin wins it over a lot of other ones. Blue Underground does a great job of this as well, by the way. Uh, Grindhouse releasing does it sometimes, but not on a regular basis. Um, but uh, Severin has, have, in my money, have been like the, the kings when it comes to doing the, uh, the soundtracks with their films. And I actually love the look of that soundtrack. American football games, yes. Everybody knows the American football games are so... <laughs> I just sounded like the... What's the name? Those uh, with our tight pants. Uh, <laughs> Saturday Night Live. It's old school Saturday Night Live for, for our, my younger viewers. Um, the whole two, two wild and crazy guys thing. But again, so for me, there's a lot of good companies out there uh, that are doing stuff. Aero Video, uh, Vinegar Syndrome, Scream Factory, uh, AGFA when they do stuff. Uh, snaps when they put movies out. Um, uh, Criterion, which I didn't mention on here, but Criterion do some amazing like special features. Not always my favorite, but when they do them right, they, they do them, they really do them right. Uh, Arrow has definitely has some of the most in, in, intricately amazing special features that you're going to see on, on, on any release. And for me, it would have been an easy pick to choose Arrow. Shout and Scream are the same thing. Yeah, like Shout is just the, the, the parent company. Scream is a, is a sub-label of Shout. I, was, I don't know if I've seen Dungeons Dragons 3. I don't even seen Dungeons Dragons 2, to be honest with you. You'd say, I know you'd say Criterion. Criterion does some great, great, I, like I've got a lot of Criterion in my in my like special features was what are the best what companies are best for special features well it's uh arrow i know you're not a fan of arrow right now arrow and severin those are hands down like the best company special feature wise with uh with screen factory being third i think and i'll put uh i'll put like uh blue underground fourth for their more recent releases but uh my uh What's my is, is Severin my second favorite company beyond Vinegar Syndrome? I mean, because you know Vinegar Syndrome is my kind of kind of my jam. Um, yeah, uh, uh, it went back and forth. I mean, it went. It's gone from Vinegar Syndrome stayed on top because they just put out so much stuff that I like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the root man. <laughs> special features. <laughs> it goes past uh, special features hands down. Um, I'll take special features over like a, like, oh, this is a brand new transfer. And I'll, I'll, often I'll watch the DVD and I think, oh, the transfer is actually pretty good. Well, Vinegar Syndrome is number one. Severin is, is number two and Arrow's number three. 
uh, Screen Factory is number four. That's my top four like uh, companies. Now that being said, uh, do I watch all the commentaries? I don't. I wish I wish I had the time to. Uh, I've, sometimes I barely get a chance to watch, go through all the movies and the features themselves. Well, today we talked about special features, and uh, it was kind of fun. Best movie with the best special effects, special features. Good question. Uh, I don't really know. I'm trying to think. Uh, it depends on the type of special effects you're talking about. Like if you're talking about special effects, special effects. I'm probably, I'm sure, probably Star Wars has one of the one of something, some great technical effects on, on there. But if you're talking about like just like effects all around, um, a lot of the Savani stuff, and like the movies were like probably Down to Dead or. Uh, or even stuff like the burning that has special features with Tom Savini. Um, I would love to see Gatorade get a good release. That would be one that uh, that I would buy, for sure. the The actress from Gatorade's passed. You know, she passed away early, unfortunately. Indicator, I love Indi Indicator. Uh, it's hard for me, Jab, to sometimes like choose a favorite company because I go back and forth on what what, what comes out. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad somebody mentioned it. Uh, Arrow's 11-hour documentary on Sam Peckinpah on Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia is a must-own for everybody that likes cinema and likes directing, and likes Sam Peckinpah's movies at all, or, or just likes really good extensive documentaries. Uh, there's like the, the documentary runs around. Well, the documentary itself runs around two hours or so long. But it has a bunch of extended interviews and all this stuff at the end. So, yeah, you get around 11 hours of content on that one. Or seen the movie Queen Kong? I don't think I have, actually. I, I like, promote the hell out of that documentary and that, and that release here. The Pe Peanut Butter Solution. Oh, and they're changing two good releases, by the way. I just I mentioned Severin, actually. Uh, they just put out such great releases. Gatorbait is a uh, is an action film, um, and what's her name again? The girl that starred in. Do you remember? Claudia. Is this Claudia? I'm trying to remember now. She's she's passed on now. She's in the in a movie that I got. She was gorgeous. That's the one I'm thinking of. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm thinking of. Claudia Jennings. Yeah. So here was the uh, poster for Gator Bait. Peanut Burst Solution is Canadian, I think, yes. Pretty sure. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Peanut Burst Solution is a Canadian film. I like the way the... Uh, where was it shot at? Let me see. I'll find it for you now. Oh, yeah, definitely Canadian. Oh, it's done in Quebec. Yeah. It's not a remake, actually. The Angelina Jolie movie, The Changing, is very different than the, uh, like the, the original Changing is, uh, is uh, basically a, is a ghost story. Uh, with uh, with George C. Scott, the new, the Angelina Jolie Changing has nothing to do with that. Uh, it just, it's only they had the same name. So yeah, no, it's it's not a remake of, of the George C. Scott film, and I actually it's it's just they have the same name. Yeah, it's ki kidnapping set in the thirties. The way knows the stuff here. Peanut Butter Solution is definitely a Canadian film. It's very Canadian actually. But yeah, I go with the original Changeling, definitely over the Angelina <laughs> Jolie one. Uh, it's actually one of the scarier like. Uh, and, and, and some subtly scary. The man who fell to Earth, yeah, with, with David Bowie. Gator Bait, I like Gator Bait better. Uh, like, uh, yeah, I love David Bowie, and Man Who Fell to Earth is a great film. But I'd rather watch her and Claudia Jennings and Gator Bait, uh, or any of that type of stuff. What do I think of the Second Sight label? I think they're incredible, and I think that their editions of, of movies like Changeling and uh, what do I have over there with Second Sight? Oh uh, God, what's the name of the release again? 
was it creep show what was it oh when a stranger calls you're a bad man <laughs> yeah when a, when a stranger calls hold on a second you want to see something that has like some cool a cool kind of release I need to be slightly getting better I can actually uh, I can actually move now or I'm just getting used to pain so this is when a stranger calls from second sight second sight puts out a lot of good stuff they're putting it the Dawn of the Dead set so this was their came in a hard box it has a, uh, a book with it which is actually pretty cool no, 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 you don't. It came with a, uh, with a poster. Oh, trust me, I'm excited about Martin. Double-sided. I love this artwork here. And the film. Oh, second side has a really good release of extra. That has the uh, Blu-ray and the soundtrack for the film. Which, by the way, When a Stranger Calls has a great soundtrack. So, uh, hands down, 110% recommend if you if you can get a When a Stranger Calls from Second Sight, especially if you get this limited edition release. It's one of the true greats. There you go, see another one. Let's see, what are some other things that kind of stand out? Uh, a lot of the indicator stuff, like especially the, start, the hammer stuff they started, uh, were like uh, like the first volume was a bit shorter. Uh, then then it came to the second volume, it got, it got like really, really good. And then the third volume is even better. And then the fourth volume, the special features just keep getting better. Um, speaking of arrow stuff, uh, the documentary on this one right here is incredible. So if you want like to have like the good documentaries that are on uh, like about uh, directors and stuff, get yourself the uh, the Blu-ray release of uh, Avoid of the Eye, Donald J. Kamel. Get the Al Adamson box set, and then pick up the Hersha Gordon Lewis feast set, and you'll have three really good documentaries. And then get the William Castle set from Indicator, and you have four director documentaries that are incredible. I have the night configuration actually. Do I have any network re release? Actually, I'll do a network video in the near future because I do have some of their stuff. Not in not much Blu-ray though. Mostly DVD. You just got the night configuration. Actually, that's a pretty cool film. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but I picked it up when I was in London last time. Hirsch Gordon Lewis is not. It's okay. I do like who you like, uh, but I do like Hirsch Gordon Lewis, uh, and I will agree. Some of his movies are man. That's that's the truth of the matter. But uh. But the documentary on Hirsch Gunnels is not. Uh, in a different way. It kind of, it's kind of in a reverse way. See, Russ Meyer started to make some different films and he kind of, and he, uh, and he went into nudie cuties and then he eventually uh, uh, kind of progressed on from that. And he did more like sex exploitation type stuff but, but he stayed at the adult and in the arena pretty much uh russ meyer i uh, sorry hershgren lewis started out doing nudie cuties the same way that russ meyer did he did it, he did more ex with more explicit stuff and and tried to do like some like kind of like but he wasn't good when it came to, to, to the titillation he did okay but those films often tended to be some of his least watched stuff uh vinegar Sinder put out his uh, collection of, of his lost films but when he did the gore stuff, uh, he uh, it was so kind of over the top, and almost kind of so bad it's good. Like yeah, got to go into with to Hirsch Gordon Lewis knowing like you're not you're not expecting quality. That's like Ted V. Michaels. You don't expect uh, Ted V. Michaels to be like bringing out the best films, but you expect most of their fun films. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely, hundred percent. Like uh, check the Hershey Gordon Lewis set for that. He he went into gore, whereas Russ Meyer went in a different direction. Uh, Russ Meyer is a better director than uh, 
definitely like uh, bar none than uh, Hersher Gordon Lewis. But Hersher Gordon Lewis is a does better like in, for does real does good low budget wise for for what he can. Like Hersher Gordon Lewis is no Al Adamson. Al Adamson is a better director than Hersher Gordon Lewis in my opinion. That's the, you know I'm putting it out there right now. Uh, but uh, I do like Hersher Gordon Lewis stuff. It's it's some it's fun. It's cheesy. Uh, it's pretty lightweight. It's driving fair. I've heard that so, Jesse that Severin is releasing an Andy Milligan set, which I'm actually would be fascinated to get. Uh, all I have is the the Andy Milligan. Uh, I don't have a lot. I've got that one, the uh, Flesh Path on Forty Second Street. And if you didn't pick that one up, that's the one adult film that you really do need. Which one's selling for five hundred? That one I got over there. Like I can understand the Shot Gore one, like because there's an even bigger set, like a huge set with like a vinyl album and stuff in it and a book. Uh, I know that one's going for like expensive prices, like the Adamson set, like the one that's those bundles. That's going to go for crazy prices down the road too. It's it's nuts. Uh, doesn't help me because I never sell any of my stuff. <laughs> if I if I had like two or three copies around there somewhere. Oh yeah, like uh, Javid C. Uh, Hersher Gordon Lewis put out the uh, the the original like Hersher. Not Hersher. Arrow put out the Ursula Gordon Lewis set in two two formats. They put out a shot gore set, uh, and then they put out a the the serial looking set called the uh, the feast set. Um, and that uh, oh yeah, and the Russ Meyer set is an earlier Arrow release. Uh, I actually just pre-ordered the uh, Gamera set around two days ago, so it doesn't come until July. So that was kind of cool. Oh yeah, it's the set I just showed there. It was the Hershey Gordon Lewis set, the one, the big one that I picked up and showed on camera. Jab, that's the that was the Hershey Gordon Lewis set. Uh, I had the Russ Meyer set. Obviously, you see it in the background of every one of my videos, and I that is on purpose um, because initially when I was doing videos, I would like go from from different angles and stuff. But um, people would always talk about the Hershey the Russ, Russ Meyer set in the background. Everybody would catch people's eyes, so I actually purposely put that in every one of my videos. So it's almost like an Easter egg now. Didn't Lewis know how to make a lot of money? <laughs> Joe Bob said he's a kind of an intellectual. Joe Bob doesn't like Black Christmas, so I'm not quite sure how much I trust Joe Bob uh, on some of his intellectuality at this point. Um, moved it to moved it to June. Well, that's not too bad. If it moves a little bit later, it gives you a little bit more time to like to get cash. And, and uh, opens up for a bit more, like m what? Kind of Samara said. I used to, I used to really like Joe Bob, and I still like his show. Uh, it's just some of his thoughts and ideas, like pause me, on, on like Darcy, the male girl, girl, like. The valedictorian. That's fantastic. That has nothing to do <laughs> with 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 his film, with his with like the film knowledge though. Um, with like to be completely honest with you, I went to school for business. I'm not Bill Gates. <laughs> Darius is extremely attractive and extremely smart too. Uh, that that's something that gets passed by. On, uh, is that Darcy the male girl? Uh, yes, she's really she's a really good looking girl, but she's actually a girl that knows her stuff. And there's times when you wa when you're watching and she'll give her opinion, and then she Joe Bob and she respects Joe Bob. I'll give his opinion. And I'm like, yeah, I'm with Darcy again on this one. Joe Bob. Sometimes it just like for the films that he knows, he really, really knows. Oh yeah, Joe Bob. Like the character, it's a character. Like, like uh, people got upset with Joe. Whole Joe Bob's like you know he's, I'm not sure about Joe Bob in, in this political climate and stuff like that. I'm not getting the politics or anything that type of stuff. But no, he's he that is by far and large a character that he puts on. But his thoughts on films are his thoughts on films. Those aren't put on. 
those are kind of what he thinks. Like he'll say like some extra stuff like the boobs and all that type of stuff because it's the character of Joe Bob. Well, I picked up the new Just Frank release. This one put up by Severin. I'm iffy. I mean, they're not the ones that are coming out now, like next month or, or that just recently came out. Maybe they're not like must haves though. Uh, like there's a lot of Just Frank stuff that I really want. Now, if the stuff that's coming out in the future, the kind of that they hinted at, yeah. Just watch Scorsese's Cape. I actually I like the love the original Cape Fear, but I'm actually a big fan. Hey, Mustang, of a uh, of uh, of the uh, of the of the Cape Fear remake. I thought it was really good actually. It's one of the better remakes, and uh, I think De Niro did a great job. And you know Juliette Lewis, who and is an actress that pretty much gets forgotten nowadays, uh, does a really good job in the film as well. And Nick Nolte, you know, overall, I, I love the movie Cape Fear. I saw it in the theater back in the day, and uh, when it came, when it first came out, and I've gone back to it a couple of times, and it stood the test of time. I do like Raising Arizona actually, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. What well, talking about his writings? Oh no, uh, what are we talking about? Oh, Joe Bob? You mean, no, no, I'm just talking about like some of his thoughts on um, like from watching the show. Uh, like some of his thoughts on, on certain films I disagreed with, right? I still like Joe Bob, that's what I'm saying. I just think I, I like Darcy's opinions on, on films better. Um, yes, I have Taxi Driver. Yeah. What's my most prized box set and movie? Uh, probably, you know, over it's uh, the Russ Meyer box is a really big one for me. I just get mad about with Joe Bob about about uh, Black Christmas. That's that's the thing. That's 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 the that's the thorn in my in my paw with Joe Bob. But I, I watch his show all the time, <laughs> and uh, and I'm a huge supporter of his uh, of, of his show and his character. I haven't checked out the crime novels actually. I, I would love to lecture though. Sometimes people forget that, uh, like a lot of these people, like Elvira and Joe Bob and a lot. Joe Bob, I think, is harder for for people to divorce. Uh, Joe Bob is a uh, he did like the uh, oh God, what's it called back in the day, guys? The show that he used to do. Uh, the he's he's like a, he's a movie host. He's a critic, and. Uh, what he's what he did, what he became famous for, Javid, is when nobody else was reviewing drive-in films, uh, like the kind of the cheesier type stuff. Joe Bob was the guy that Monster Vision. Thank you, Khalil. I forgot the name there. Uh, he was the guy that started like reviewing them in his uh, in his newspaper, like uh, newspaper column. I think it was first, right, guys? And then they gave him a show, Monster Vision, which for a lot of people it, it brought the, it brought them up on monster films and and showed them it, like. Kind of, he does some amazing commentaries actually. Uh, they're harder to find. Uh, I got hell high commentary here, um, and I'm always I always love his commentaries. I, I need to get more uh, TNT. Yeah, and now on Shutter. So if you got Shutter, Javid, uh, Joe Bob has a, a show that he does on there called The Last Drive-In. And uh, but yeah, he's big on like horror and schlocky stuff. And Oh my God! I am, I'm the Joe Bob of YouTube. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, uh, we kind of went down the same path of, of both liking really schlocky Z-grade horror films, and uh, and, sl and movies like that. Oh God! Yeah. So there, that's why I, uh, I've got some issues with Joe Bob, because we're too, we're too damn similar. <laughs> Done it. Now you too. Stay safe, dude. Keep washing those hands. And uh... from poop count. I should do that. I should. <laughs> Joe Bob's favorite film is Texas Chainsaw. That's one of my favorites too, actually. Nineteen seventy-four. Um, Near perfect film. When I think of films that are near perfect, uh, yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a near perfect film. I liked it so much I hated the sequel for years after because I, it just didn't have that feel to it. It took me a while to get into the sequel. But Carolyn Williams definitely was one of the reasons. 
that I got into it. I feel bad. This is obnoxious to come something Joe Bob of YouTube. It just it just makes sense. We like the same type of movies. He just knows more about those films than I did. He's more of a scholarly guy. Hey, Bass Case, another favorite of mine. <laughs> Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Actually, Woody Harrelson probably with the hair thing is probably a good. <laughs> probably be a good choice. That or, or what's his name? Ed. What was that movie? He had hair. Sure, he's got head hair. So, <laughs> to play me, he also has a similar hairline. Blood Harvest. See, me and Joe Bob. Both ran on, on that one. Arrow did have a special feature on that one. That actually was originally on, uh, I think it's the second site release because I've got it. Uh, unless there's another documentary on there as well. <laughs> Remind you of the character of Robert <laughs> in the Wars blue. I'm not sure how to take that, man. I don't, I, although I don't remember what that film is. Are we talking about like the one where he where he kind of goes to blackface? But like you know, Tropic Thunder is that what we're talking about? I'm gonna take that as an insult since I don't <laughs> since I don't remember. Although I did see Tropic Thunder, I would not remember the film. It saved my life right now though. I just remember that Robert Downey Jr. was amazing in it. No, I don't know, Javid. I'm pretty, I'm pretty incensed right now, dude. I'm good. <laughs> Hairstyle, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> or lack thereof. <clears throat> One of these days, I, f I figure, you know, it's got to go right. Like the hair will just like disappear, and I'll be like Picard. But, uh, but now, nah. am I, am I still writing? I'm, I'm trying. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It's been, it's been harder to, uh, to write recently. I just need to get some time to get stuff done. I've been focusing a lot lately on, like, aside from work, I've been focusing a lot. And I hope you guys have noticed, hopefully you noticed. Um, I've, uh, been trying to focus on my channel a lot more and put out a lot more content not just a lot more content but put out quality content that, that i hope is quality content and working towards getting some pre-taped stuff done down the road as well and been looking at how i would go about and how i would do a podcast so uh, a lot of that has taken up a lot of my time that's the that's that's where things have been going for me uh, and with the move, I haven't got a chance to do a lot of the uh, a lot of writing, but I'm hoping once things get straightened away, I'm going to be able to spend a lot of time doing some writing. I'm still saving for the for the Blue Yeti microphone. Do I know how to edit videos? Well, yeah, I went to I did journalism originally, uh, and uh, editing was was kind of my thing. Uh, that. Not just videos though. Like I edited like like TV programs, like news programs. Edited like radio shows. Uh, it's been a while, so I, I just got to get back to the into the uh, to the thing of it again. I still read comics, not as much as I used to, but I wish I could because uh, I do love comics. Older stuff. I got like older comics. I read two comments above. All right. I thought about making none live stream comment content. Uh, yes, actually, I've, I've thought about making none live stream content for my channel. Uh, uh, and and there is stuff that's coming up, including a video where we look at the uh, where we walk through Valentine's Bluff today.
Come through as Aaron in the Cult of Cinema. That'd be awesome. What's your name? Pass. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Great Korean, American, comedian. It's so sad when like the, like the, like you get like big passing aways and then like somebody else will pass that may not be as, as famous, and uh, like Diane Thorne for instance, uh, was like one that she you know she, nobody mentioned her on like the, on the, uh, you know on the Oscars she she died for like, or uh, she she did Elsa and like I was a big Elsa fan. Severin <laughs> Severin and Vinegar Severin need to sponsor me. I wish man, uh, as long as I'm here, uh, actually. Uh, in like in, in this part of the world uh, I don't see sponsorship happening for my channel at all um, that's the you know that's that's why I do patreon that's why super chats pop up every now and then because I'm I'm doling away to do to uh, upgrade stuff yeah Kirk Douglas lived definitely a full life Am I stocked up on food and supplies? I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm sure uh, there's stuff I probably need to get. I gotta get some bread, actually. That's, that's one thing I need to do. Uh, not tonight, day though. Probably tomorrow. Petition for me, yeah. <laughs> Petition for Vinegar Cinema Severin to like to sponsor the channel. Lord knows I got enough people to to, to buy a lot some some of their stuff. Do you know how many people like t text me afterwards and said I picked up the uh, the labs and said after your video that was actually cool. I did get to uh, do my uh, the code thing. Uh, I, I was super stoked by one of that. Uh, they were like ten minutes after it, the code didn't work the first time I tried it, so I, I, I texted them and I'm like, oh shoot, I'm gonna miss out on these movies, and I did miss out on uh, what was it, Taboo Four that sold out, but uh, but I was I was waiting like I'm okay, I gotta watch the, you know, and then they got back to me. They got back to me super fast though. And uh, Vinegar Cinema, great company to work with. Uh, ordering from Vinegar Cinema, I recommend it like 100%. They do great, great stuff. Are people panic buying in Canada? Unfortunately, yes, they are panic buying, but here in Canada, uh, it's a little silly, but uh, but it uh, it happens. I oh, know you meant it in a good way. That's actually, I like that. <laughs> But with that being said, at 107 minutes, you guys know what time it is right now. And I have done what I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that I did this weekend is I wanted to make a video every day from Friday, a Friday video, a Saturday video, and a Sunday video for, for you guys here. But now it is time for tea. So, as always, I am Aaron. This is my movie library. Thank you to my Patreon supporters out there. If you want to support me on Patreon, feel free to do so. Uh, my better half tells me I, I, I should like mention that more. I'm not good at mentioning that stuff. It's the Canadian part of me. Um, I'm Aaron. You guys are the cult of cinema. And you know what? You guys rock. I'll see you guys here next time. And we'll soon be talking about the Vinegar Center announcements.